from the KWQC studio, this is TV6 News at 6. I'm so happy you're okay. I'm going to keep some Easter cards for you. Right. It really is. I just can't believe it. I just talked to my other brother. He said, man, he's looking at the news right now. He said, man, I don't know how you made it out. I said, I believe it. I know it's good. First at 6 tonight, we are continuing to follow the rescue efforts and the building collapse in downtown Davenport. Good evening, I'm Paula Sands. Rhetoric is off. Crews are continuing to clean up after the apartment building on Main Street partially came down last night. Our team has the latest for you right now as we start with Kyle Dickens with more on the building itself. Kyle. Uh, Paula, as we uh, hit the 5 o'clock mark here, that marked the 24-hour mark since this disaster occurred. This disaster is at what is known as the Davenport. It's a six-story residential and commercial structure that you see behind me here. Uh, it was a partial building collapse, but you can see a big chunk of that is gone here. I'll step out of the way, and we'll zoom in here, and you can kind of see the scene here. Uh, so, again, the Davenport was a six-story residential and commercial building in the 300 block of North Main Street here in Davenport. All city officials and all city offices were on scene along with Mavis, that's the mutual aid box alarm system, technical rescue teams, and then eventually demolition crews arrived late last night uh, here in the evening hours on Sunday. Medforce landed at approximately 940 as well, but they did not take anyone from the scene. And this just in two TV6, Davenport officials do confirm that seven people have been rescued from the building and one person was extracted from the rubble and uh, rescued by medics, EMS and fire. Their condition is unknown at this time. Uh, it does remain unconfirmed if there are any additional trapped, injured or deceased people. Although we can tell you this, that there are quite a few loved ones down here at the ground level talking about how they have not heard from their loved ones and they are very concerned as a lot of them have gone and uh, and sought to uh, either through hospitals or other networks uh, to try to get in contact with them. City officials do confirm that they have received complaints from residents in the past on the condition of this building. City officials did not comment further on any actions that were taken. And this just into TV6, the owner of the property has been served with a notice of an order on order for demolition of the property. And the property is currently being secured by a contractor on site. And this afternoon, and demolition is expected to take place come tomorrow morning. So that is the latest right now here in downtown Davenport. Right now, all you can hear is some buzzing of the fire alarms still in the building. Other than that, the scene, unfortunately, is rather calm as crews work to secure the scene itself. And uh, in the search and rescue effort continues. Reporting live in downtown Davenport, Kyle Dickens, KWQC TV6 News. Kyle, thank you. Now continuing our team coverage. Friends and family, Kyle just mentioned that. Many of those people who live in the building, their friends are waiting in the streets for some word on their loved one's whereabouts. They're saying they haven't heard from them since the incident last night. They just want to know they're safe. TV6's Larry Goodwin is downtown too. He had a chance to talk to some of those folks. Larry? Paul, I spoke with Antoine Smith Sr., a resident here in Davenport, who said he has loved ones and friends that lived inside this building, and he has not heard from them yet. He says emotions are running high, and he wants some kind of information about their condition. It's mainly emotions, and I'm not trying to hold on to my emotions and just let these people do their job, because they're here for a reason. But I just want some kind of information, like tell me something anything like if you have found her and she's in a morgue somewhere tell me something instead of just sitting here playing the waiting game smith would also mention that he's trying to be empathetic about the situation and let first responders do their job but said it's extremely hard smith would also say that the last time he spoke to his loved ones was on the other side of that building at 10 o'clock yesterday morning in davenport larry goodwin TV6 News. All right, Larry, good work. Thank you. Now, in just this last hour, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds has issued a disaster proclamation in Scott County. This order activates the state's individual assistance grant program for those impacted by this partial building collapse. It provides grants up to $5,000 for households who meet certain income requirements. You can apply for those grants on the Iowa Health and Human Services website. 
The American Red Cross has set up an emergency shelter for those who are displaced, providing shelter, meals, and other necessities. We do work with partner agencies, we work with uh, level, local government entities, we work with police and fire organizations as well, and so those conversations continue. Uh, but again, this shelter is open and will continue to be open uh, as long as is necessary. I mentioned some of the, the health and mental health services. Sometimes it takes a couple of days, uh, and we hear from folks maybe then. And so. Groups accepting supply donations include this list, the Red Cross and Salvation Army, Quad Cities Community Foundation, Scott County Humane Society, U-Haul and West Davenport, and 4th Street Nutrition, all collecting donations to help those affected by the apartment collapse. And as the families make their way to the Red Cross emergency shelter tonight, many are wondering about other ways to help them if possible. So Kyle Keel is live in Davenport now where one business is helping their neighbors who lost every Everything, Kyle. Paula, the owners of 4th Street Nutrition were actually located on the first floor of the Davenport building behind me. Of course, uh, they are now going to be displaced, but not knowing what the future holds for them, they decided to spring into action to help others who were displaced, mainly the residents that they saw on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, basically, uh, what they did was went out to the stores and bought diapers, toys, clothing, food, anything that the duo thought that people needed, they sprung into action. We caught up with Toriana Hill. She and her young son were actually displaced from the building, the partial building collapse, and she recalls her experience and how grateful she is for the donations from 4th Street Nutrition. I thought it was just loud sounds, but then I started hearing my neighbors scream, so that's when I realized it was real. So I grabbed him. He was sleeping, so I grabbed him, and then I left at the back stairwell. Um, they brought me clothes, shoes, goodies for my baby, a stroller, um, pull-ups, diapers, feminine care, yeah, all the necessities. So thankful for it, so thankful for it because we really, we didn't have nothing, we don't have nothing. Yeah. The owners of 4th Street Nutrition are continuing to collect money so they can continue to shop for others who have been displaced. If you would like information on how you can donate to them, we have that information on our news app as well as our website, kwqc.com. And also, we want to remind you that that Red Cross shelter is still open at KSI and will be as long as needed. And they wanted us to remind you that pets are welcome. Live in Davenport, Kyle Keel, TV6 News. Kyle, thanks. Now, uh, speaking of pets, incidents like this also affect our four-legged friends, and a local animal shelter is assisting in the aftermath of the collapse. TV6's Hernan Gutierrez found a pet owner relieved to be reunited with her dog. As residents of the Davenport look for answers for how to even start rebuilding their lives, the Humane Society of Scott County reunited one resident with their furry friend this afternoon. After being separated overnight, Justice Jacobs and her dog Xenon were together once again, less than a day after the collapse of their building. Fortunately, the Humane Society was able to bring Xenon in and get in touch with Jacobs. She was at work when she heard news of the incident and was able to find temporary living arrangements thanks to a client. Absolutely. Um, definitely in shock. It will not start setting in until probably it's over. I can't believe it's happening. I don't know what the next steps are. I can't believe it's happening to me. Staff here at the Humane Society are encouraging residents of the Davenport to check here at the shelter for their lost pets. If you are looking to donate to those residents, pet supplies, food, anything you can think of, donations of that will be taken here any time of the day. If there's someone in the lobby, they'll come and take it. Otherwise, you can come to this bin and donate those pet treats or blankets here on this bin. In Davenport, Hernan Gutierrez, TV6 News. We're also looking into the inspection history of that apartment building called the Davenport, downtown Davenport. We're going over the inspection records from the city, as well as gathering reports from current and former residents of that building about the conditions there. We'll have that story for you tonight at 10. And we're keeping you updated on the latest in the apartment collapse on air, online. Download our news app or visit our website to get all the up-to-the-minute details. Next at 6 tonight.